Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Marcus from Instead Covenant and in today's video we're going to be talking about what SOX compliance is and what controls are associated with it. Now I have to state that I am no expert on SOX compliance and in this topic it's not going to be going into too much detail about this. But if you're watching this video and you comply with SOX I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think it's like for your business and uh, do you have any tips and uh, hints and tips? To make it easier to implement. Now I have to state that I'm no expert on SOX compliance and uh, this topic is not going to go into too much detail about this but if you're watching this video and you comply with SOX I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you think about it, uh, what you think it's like for businesses. Do you have any hints and any tips uh, to make this easier to implement for people? Now SOX is short for the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. This was passed by the United States Congress way back in 2002. This act was uh, named after its sponsors, who were Senator Paul Sarbanes and uh, Representative Michael G. Oxley. Now, people who are watching this video and are working in smaller public-based companies or uh, based outside the U.S. may never have heard of this act before. This is uh, because it's primarily brought in, uh, brought in to protect U.S.-based companies after all the financial scandals that had happened before the act was released. For example, when large corporations such as El Elron. Uh, WorldCom and Tyco were faced with fraud charges. Due to these financial related fraud accusations and WorldCom going bankrupt with over owing $104 million, a billion dollars even, uh, enough was enough and things had to change. This was a time when the dot com bubble had just burst around the year 2000. Lots of tech companies uh, were starting up, funds were, and investments were being given to pretty much any company that wanted it. So between 2001 and 2002, the US started to investigate a lot of the larger corporations and indictments for fraud was starting to uh, be talked about. Then in 2002, the US Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, which was based around the financial oversight of companies. Congress had woken up to the fact that they needed to be stricter and tighter controls which governed, and or uh, governed the auditing and control internal controls of companies as well as ensuring that companies met strict yes, strict regulations that were set out. So that's a little bit about why SOX is around, but it doesn't really tell you what SOX compliance is. Why should you have to adhere to it? What, what are the controls? What are the, what's in place? This next section will hopefully clear all these questions up for you. So what is SOX compliance? SOX, uh, without having to go into too much detail and bore everyone to death, SOX Compliance is an act which states that any public company is obliged to provide accurate proof of their financial reporting. This means that primarily it is only associated with public companies, although all companies should really know and adhere to it to ensure that they're on the right side of the playing field. Companies should ensure that they are keeping data safe and secure and free of tampering. They should ensure that they are logging and tracking all of their information, any security breaches of their information and or systems, and they are, uh, any processes that are have in place to ensure that Lessons are learned from any issues that they have. Logs of everything should be put in place and kept securely. These should be made readily available for ordering if and when required. And they should also be protected against anyone actually accessing them, removing them, deleting them, amending them, things like that. Companies must also prove their compliance for the past three months or 90 days. Now, some of the UK or European based uh, people watching this video may think some of this sounds quite familiar. This is because a lot of these controls and processes are already in place for the General Data Protection Regulation or the GDPR. GDPR, although it doesn't concentrate around strict financial regulations in order, but it does actually concentrate on the protection of data, which a lot of SOX is for. So, what does achieve? Achieving SOX compliance for a business mean. When a SOX uh, audit is performed, it is usually up to the IT department to actually prove that the company complies with all the necessary areas of compliance. This can be provided by uh, providing the necessary documentation, such as logging, access control, change control, and the list just continues. This documentation can help uh, show that the company has met the financial transparency and data security controls which are required. Although it doesn't have to be primarily the IT department, the IT department will work on a wide range of business services to to ensure that the compliance is met however. For this to work efficiently however, the IT department and its staff must all be familiar with the standard and the controls which are set out by the Act. The IT department must ensure and be aware that the logs uh, must be kept for a minimum amount of time, 90 days, that they must be uh, kept secure and tamper free and that people that if people ask for any evidence it must be provided and be transparent. As part of the SOX Act, Section 302 states that the Act, if they, they spit the words out, Section 302 states that the executive officer and the chief financial officer must sign and review their quarterly and annual reports and agree that they have certified the reports to the best of their knowledge and that the information is correct and truly reflects the business financial position. 
thereby adhering to the SOX compliance. Section 404 of the SOX Act mandates that all public companies have the necessary systems in place to ensure that the data is available for audit and meets the necessary controls. So what in, uh, what software can you use to help comply with the SOX Act? Uh, this can be a bit of a how long is a piece of string type question and it can depend upon a lot of what technologies the company is already using. Um, for example, what licenses do they already have access to? What software and technology do they already have in place and so forth? But ensuring that a SIEM is in place to keep track of um, logs, alerts, uh, help to analyze um, trends and systems and events can also help. Uh, this will help identify any breaches and authorized access to information. Ensuring that you have email archiving in place and that backups are performed and also checked regularly will also help you ensure that your data is kept intact and if anything happens you can actually recover from that. Ensuring that least privilege access is in place and people only have access to what they actually need. This will help reduce the chances of tampering against files and systems. Implementing it and using data loss prevention software will also help you ensure that information is kept within the actual company's border or the internal systems and it's not actually accidentally sent out of the company and that's it that's a quick intro i hope this uh, makes sense to you all and if anyone does actually comply with socks in their company i would love to hear your thoughts and what you use and why and why you use it in the comments you know it's always great to have um, people's words of wisdom in there and it also helps other people watching these videos and as always it'd be great if you like this video so i know that it actually makes sense for you um, subscribe to the channel, uh, get more information and videos like this, and yep, see you next time.